friends, Tracy here from the Sewing Channel. Welcome back. There's a couple things that we can do at home to check our cotton fabric masks to make sure that they're even doing any good for us because some just aren't and some are doing really well. Now, we can't do a regular fit test at a hospital like they do for the N95s. I mean, come on, our masks are not N95 masks, nor will they ever be N95 masks. But we can sew the absolute best mask that we can to protect ourselves and others. First, let's take a look at my breathing test. Here you see me breathing in and out. Now the only way you could tell that I was breathing in and out was that the mask is suctioning in and then as I exhale, it blows back up. Now that tells me that I have a really good seal on this mask. Now the nose pinch is essential here. The contour underneath the chin is just absolutely amazing. It really does curve and just cradles that chin area all the way up toward the ear. Now here you see the nose area and notice no fogging of the lenses as well. I credit that to the foam. If I wanted to make this mask better, I could add some double-sided tape right where the elastic gets sewn in on the sides. That is the only place where I can feel some air being transmitted back and forth. Now let's check out the flame test. Here I tried really hard to blow that candle out and as you can see I just absolutely can't even get it to waver. This research from Wake Forest says that we need to use premium 100% woven cotton, two or more layers. The CDC even states right on their website to use multiple layers and it needs to fit snugly. Here's the material list you'll need. Please look at it closely and screenshot it if needed. As always, all supplies will be in the description box along with this free pattern. After you've printed out your pattern, be sure to check the 2 inch mark. That will tell you whether or not you have printed out your pattern properly. Cut out either the regular size or the large size. Take note of the fold line. Both patterns also have a quarter inch seam allowance. You need two pieces of different fabric. This way, when you go to put on your mask, you will know which side is the inside, the clean part, and you will know which side is the dirty part, which is the outside of the mask where the air hits. I love this technique of cutting on the fold. It sure does make my life a lot easier. Please stick around toward the end. I have a very important question to ask all of you. Oh, it's more like a favor. Don't forget to cut out the three and a half by three inch piece of cotton fabric. With right sides together, you're going to fold both pieces and sew a quarter inch seam allowance around the entire curved area on both pieces. Take your two and a half inch long strips of your fabric bond, you only have two of them, and you're just going to place them on the sides of that rectangle. So they're on the two shortest sides. You're not going to place them in the middle or all the way around, only on the sides. You see, when we sewed down the middle, we sewed holes in our mask. 
And here, what we're doing is we are covering that up and we are using the fabric bond instead of stitching it. And we only need two small pieces to make that adhere. Since this is the part of the mask that is heavily breathed through, I do believe that that is why we get such a good seal with this mask, just having that extra piece. Take your time and iron one fabric bond down at a time. It should look something like this. Here, I'm just showing you that I can put something up in the middle there. I don't want that sealed up. I want that nice and loose. Take your quarter inch foam that is five inches and you're going to take the piece of fabric that's just a little bit larger than that and you're going to sew a U shape all the way around, leaving an opening. I'm going to add a little bit of duct tape on the ends of this wire because it can poke through and I don't think I want to hurt anybody. Now that you've encased the foam with that piece of fabric, we are going to put the wire down into the foam just as you see me do here. Once you get the coated wire in there, go ahead and just seal it by sewing it shut. Remember, the foam side goes toward the nose. Make a snip right there at the top, just so that it bends a little bit easier. Now take the foam side of the nose piece and you're going to put it on the inside of the inner part of the face, if that makes sense. And then you're going to take and you're going to stitch right along there, but you're going to use your zipper foot if you have one. If not, just get as close as you can. I'm just stitching these two pieces together right in the seam allowance area. Don't forget, stick around to the end so you can hear the favor I have to ask of you. This is what it should look like after you stitch in the seam allowance. I'll lift it up here in a second. It's like a hinge, see? Just where I'm pointing here, put a couple of stitches. Now take both pieces with right sides together Take your clip and clip the two nose areas together, right sides together, and then you're going to clip the chin area. Also, you're going to leave an area open that we can turn it right side out. Here I'm just pointing to where I will sew all the way around and where I'm going to stop at. Turn your mask right side out, being sure to get the corners out as well. After you press that open area, you're going to go ahead and stitch that closed and only stitch that area. Do not stitch around the entire mask because that just makes more unneeded holes.
The one millimeter round elastic has proven to be the best elastic for a cotton homemade face mask. I buy mine on eBay and there are a ton of sellers that have the same item, so check it out. Here you're going to fold both wings in about a quarter to a half an inch in. Go ahead and press them down and then lay that nine and a half inch piece of elastic right in there and then stitch right across. If I'm giving it to someone, I usually just tie a light uh, slip knot so that they can change it as they see fit to fit their face. The elastic should be free flowing in there, so hopefully you did not sew on it. Now some of you have left comments that you can't find some of the supplies. And some of you know already, I do carry the foam in my eBay store already pre-cut in the strips that you need. There's six of them to a bag, so check that out. It'll be in the description box. Now, because of this video, I've decided to put together a little kit that has the six pieces of foam, the six coated wire in it, cut to fit, and also you're going to get 30 inches of the heat bond. And that is because some of you can't get to the store. And so I just wanted to offer that to you. The links will all be in the description box. For my friends who don't know how to find the description box, if you wait until the end of this video, I have a very short tutorial, like seconds long, on how to find it on a smartphone. So if that's where you're at, stick around to the end for that. Hopefully you've gained knowledge from my video today. Now I'm asking for something from you. I'm asking you to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when I upload a video. You see, this is the only way that content creators get paid. I'm just being honest. So if I don't have subscribers and I don't have people watching my videos, then I'm not gonna be able to stay on YouTube. So that would be awesome if you could do that for me. Until next time on the Sewing Channel, take care. If you have a smartphone, it will look something like this. Now the little triangle arrow is right next to where the title of the video is. See it there to the right? Now it's pointing down once you click it. And then what happens, it expands the entire description box open and that's where all the links are. I hope you can find it this time.